Paul Childerly has a problem. The Chinese water deer are hammering the farmer's crops. Usually he can stalk close enough for a shot, but when they're feeding in the middle of a 100 acre field like this one, that's not so easy. If only he was able to shoot confidently out to 300, 400 yards or more. Well, he might just have found the answer. He's been tempted to take up precision rifle shooting, and today he's visited by Andy Simpson Nix, who runs PRS in the UK. Not only that, he's got a fancy new Seiko S20 rifle, a box full of goodies, and the latest Zeiss LRP long-range scope. Andy is going to help him set it all up and teach him the tips and tricks he'll need for shooting at longer ranges. I've always been a foxer, for instance. I do a lot of foxing, a lot of varmint shooting. Um, but the crossover between the two, we'll call it disciplines, is, is quite good because, like I said, we predominantly shoot off something like this, which is a bag, and that will sit on top of it. Like I said, it might be a purpose-built stage. Drop your rifle down, find your targets. You then engage those targets, uh, and it'd be under time constraint. But since I started shooting precision rifle, I find myself taking this out of foxing because I can drop that on a fence post and you'll be surprised how quick I can engage a fox from that rather than off the bonnet of a car or whatever it might be because you can get onto it a lot quicker. So the, the crossover between the two is good. It's good fun. It's good fun. It sounds a bit more my cup of tea really because it's, it's a bit more action. So there's different stages and they're shooting at different distances. So you're using your skill, not just the equipment, you're using your, you're judging the wind, you're judging everything quite quick, quick reactions. I'm quick, quite, quite erratic shooter or a quick shooter. All that sort of stuff. That's a stalking rifle. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, you, you, yeah. You need a, well. <laughs> so I think for me, it would suit me quite well and it's something new. And it's not just sitting down at, and, and shooting at 500 and then 1,000. It's, you know, a lot of different it's like positions, um, and I think it'd be good to meet a few people and maybe sell a bit of stalking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Business. So this one is, we're dropping the new S3 onto this. Uh, we're going to go out to the range, we're going to zero it. We're going to get Paul engaging targets out to four or 500 yards um, and just sort of see how well this optic cross, you can get a crossover between shooting target and shooting uh, in a hunting scenario, um, I've taken mine stalking, the S3, and because you have that flexibility between the both, it makes it the ideal setup. So that's, that's the challenge for today. We're gonna get Paul onto the rifle, zero, shooting some gongs at distance, something I know he's done before, um, but in a, in a first focal plane instance with the new S3. So basically, that is obviously the perfect scope for it. Obviously you've got a basic rifle there, it's not a, like your, your chassis yeah. rifle or anything yeah. else. That's, a, yeah. that's obviously more of a, uh, you know, in between rifle. Well, you, you say that it's a six five, so this would actually drop straight into a factory class. In yeah. Precision okay. rifle. I mean, it's a hell of a rifle. It's a Seiko, as I said. It's got some pedigree to it. Um, drop the optic on there, get the right ammunition, and you're away. Drop that's, a muzzle brake on it. That's the next thing, right? You'd be blown away at the the, the difference a muzzle yeah. brake makes. Yeah. It turns when you fire instead of having that muzzle flip that you're so used to. It's, yeah. It's nothing. It. Yeah. So muzzle brake, ideal to have a ten shot mag. Uh, 10 or 12, yep, yep. 10 or 12? Yeah, you, some, some stages are 12. So if you've got a couple of magazines, you can switch so them out. Clip them up. Yeah. Okay. Job done. Right, tick, tick. Pimp it up. See what, how many bits and pieces we can put on it. It's quite interesting, actually, because I don't shoot a heavy rifle. Whereas this job, you need a heavy rifle. I would take it, to be honest with you, varmint shooting. Um, shooting things at long distance. You've got, you know, foxes at a long distance on a, on a, on a bank somewhere. Um, some crows, whatever else, something like that. Or even an awkward spot where you've got some deer on some long long fields where you, you can't get to. Um, again, you know, you have to take a bit further shots, so you, you, you probably use something like this rather than your, your conventional basic rifle you're taking and shooting stuff up to like 150, 200. So yeah, it's got its place. Um, I don't want to carry it all the time and use it all the time, but yeah, definitely, definitely one for the cabinet. With Paul's new rifle all pimped up, it's off to the range to get it zeroed. Andy starts by ball sighting it for him. All right, give that a crack, Paul. See how you get on with that, matey. Rock and roll. Here we go. Let's go another uh, inch up. Inch up, yeah? Yeah. Hey there, Bob. 
left one click. Back less one click. Bore sighted it and uh, we just zeroed it in to 100. So uh, what we do now is we just got to the top and see if we can hit some uh, gongs. Paul wants to try Andy's rifle first, starting with the steel target at 400 metres. Zoom out a little bit, just give you a bit more field of view. Okay. Like that probably. Just hold straight up and you should, you should nail that. There you go. Yeah. You know, there's naffle recoil at this day. How many do you want to hold out on the far one then? On the far one? 490. Uh, you'll need 2.8, so chuck another. No. Right there. The far one, that should get you on roughly there. It's incredibly accurate, this rifle as well. Look at that hit. <laughs> look at that, look at that hit. Is it centre punched? <laughs> <laughs> right, let's go back to those basics. <laughs> <laughs> it's half the fun. Right then, so, here we go. Right, so, we're at zero to 100. Cool. Ish. <laughs> um, I would try about, s from from here to that 400, I reckon you're going to be... Let's, let's, let's work gently. Let's work gently. Let's, let's, do two, let's do the 209 <laughs> let's do the two one. <laughs> Come on. Uh, so, <laughs> let's say you're probably about... 3 MOA to get onto that, possibly. How many? Three, so because we're on a field, I'd go at two and hopefully you shoot low, then you can adjust from there. Two clicks up, yeah? So, well, you're in, well, you're in, you're in MOA. quarter MOA clicks yeah. there, so you need eight clicks up. Right, let's All do right. it. I'll take Finger, the time. Fingers and ears. This one to boom a bit, guys. <laughs> Perfect. That's nice and not too bad. Nice and cool stuff. Right, let's have a go at that, that furthest one there. Uh, She's at the bottom of that last one, I reckon she wants to go up a bit. That's below. Yeah, he's below. Below? Yeah. So come yeah. up one then. Here we go. There yeah. you go. Generally, as I say, we, we, we tend to run around the 16 mark on, on your zoom, so yeah. it's not actually yeah. overcrowded. And because it's got such a nice fine reticle on that, and the hash marks are laid out nicely, you don't actually get a busy reticle in your face when you're trying to look no. through it. Which is, again, another big, sort of a big point on the LRP range is that the, the reticle on it is quite possibly one of the best on the market because of the hash marks being in the, yeah. nice, in the right places. And they're, they're so they're nice and fine as well. You're not getting obstructed yeah. when you're looking through the optic. So. It's a satisfying noise, the, the, isn't it? The donk that yeah, comes back is yeah, very satisfactory. Yeah, is, yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah. yeah, whenever you're pulling the trigger, you're happy, aren't you? So yeah, um, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try and get booked onto one when I'm uh, mm. yeah. not, not trying to. When you're not trying to shoot some cold deer. deer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, all good. Fantastic. Talking of culling deer, Paul has a job that needs doing. And Andy is keen to shoot his first Chinese water deer. Right, Andy. So this is a field, okay? This is a hundred acre field. And the reason I brought you here is because obviously there's not many backstops. Yeah. So we've got to get in the right place. Um, it'd be all off the sticks. Obviously, you need a bit of much as we can on the uh, elevation to be yeah. shooting downwards. And obviously, you've got a nice small round. Yeah, yeah. Um, using a, uh, an 87 grain on a DV yeah, Max. So. Perfect. Ballistic tip. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it's not ideal for, for carcass damage. No. But the thing is, well, these Chinese, because they're so small, the front end, a lot of the time, we use them for the dog dogs. Yeah. So we've got the fillets and the, and the, the back straps and the haunches yeah. are all fine. So just smack them in the front end, no stress at all. We do a massive loop. It's not going to be conventional stalking because we're doing a job. The farmer said to me, shoot two today, yeah. don't shoot one. So yeah. basically, you need some off the ground. Yeah. And as you see on a lot of the ground, there's plenty of There's bait. plenty around, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we want to get, get the numbers down a bit. So, yeah. yeah. We don't have to look far for our first cull animal. But there's a bit of walking to get a safe backstop. Just check the perimeter before we go. Mm -hmm. Yep, we're all clear. How far is that? Uh, one forty. First Chinese, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. 
Yeah, well done. Yeah, very good. Yeah, young buck. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. Good day. That was a warm up one. <laughs> that, was a bit, that was too close for you. It was too, yeah, too close. <laughs> what we'll do now is we'll, um, we'll head out and we'll, we'll see if we can get one of these out on this, this top field here. Yeah, cool. Part of the field yeah. and see. We'll just ship across to them. There's two more out in that far field. Yeah, I've just seen those. Give it a little shape before we uh, shoot it, because it might stand up. I don't think it will, but it definitely put his neck up straight. I'll give it a, give a quick call, okay? Woo! Well done. Hey, thank you very much, mate. That's the first Chinese, then? Yeah, well. Well done. Second, well done. second Chinese, yeah. <laughs> so, well done. Yeah, great stuff. Yeah, two off his grey. Hey. Happy farmer. Happy farmer. And uh, you see how difficult it is. And it's, mm. it's, it's weird stalking. It's not like your normal hedgerow business. Obviously, we did the last, last little bit we did. but It's a game of angles on it this is. ground. It's a game, game of, of angles. Game of angles. Yeah. Finding the right spot, safe yeah. backstop. Exactly. Check it because the, the walkers, yeah. check the footpaths. Yeah, and it's literally like that. You know, first thing I do, obviously, that's the right animal. Search around, check the footpaths, check the hedges, check everywhere. Yeah. And it's, yeah, we're clear. Yeah. Clear, clear, bang, down, dead, yeah. done. Everyone's happy. And it's proof that a long range optic is also suitable for hunting. It does. Which is sure. exactly the whole point of yeah, this optic. Yeah, definitely, so, yeah. Yeah, it does the job perfectly well. Yeah, no, absolutely very perfect. Good. Stunning, thank you very much. Well, thank you. No worries. Top job. Job done. Yeah, beautiful. I think the scope's great. It's, 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 a, it's quite good because you can cross over, so you could have it for both um, disciplines with, with a bit of hunting. With the long distance stuff, it's great. It's got the first focal plane. Um, it's got high mag magnification, which I like. I like to really crank it up and see what I'm shooting at. Yes, it does show your your wobbles, but I like to see what where I am you know, with, with that. So um, great features, big big uh, turret, so you, you know easy to dial in. Yeah, and it's uh, actually it's actually quite compact. Um, so it's not like a big long scope with big long bits of pieces. It's actually quite a nice compact scope. So yeah, all in all, it's actually. Uh, yeah, very impressed, very impressed. And the most important thing, it's good to look through. And the crosshair is good on it as well. Even though it's got a lot going on, you can really focus on the small cross, which I thought, you know, especially zeroing in, because it's got the, it's got like a, uh, obviously all the, the dials coming in and you've got the tiny little cross in the middle. I clicked it on red and do you know what? Focused it in, perfect. So yeah, I mean, it's great. It's um, yeah, good bit of kit, very impressed and uh, look forward to using it this year. Follow the links below for more about the Zeiss LRP scope, Seiko rifles and PRS shooting. Or track down the kit you want at kitfinder.co.uk.